Watch Dr. Phil talking to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu about the anti-Israel and anti-Semitic rage on American and Western campuses. What do you say? What, you know, I've been very outspoken about what's happened on these campuses. I, I'm shocked. I, I, I say it's just they're fostering intellectual rot. They are not teaching critical thinking among these young people. And what do you say when they characterize what Hamas did as resistance, not as an invasion? Well, Hamas uh, openly declares its goal to wipe out everything you see around here, to kill every man, woman, and child in Israel, to destroy the state. That's not resistance. That's naked, brutal aggression. That's their doctrine. Iran is saying the same thing. Uh, our goal is to destroy Israel. We're the small Satan, by the way. Their goal is to destroy you. You're the big Satan. We're just standing in their way, and they're right. We're not merely protecting ourselves. We are. But in so doing, we're protecting all of free civilization, all of Western culture. They want to erase it. They want to uh, tear it out. So what, what, I, uh, what I always feel is that we can't kowtow to these fashions. And what is happening on American campuses and American cities, you got, uh, first of all, you have a lot of ignorant people there who's, uh, I'm sorry to say, who've, uh, who, whose sense of history at best goes back to breakfast, not even that. Okay, they don't have <laughs> the faintest clue what Hamas is. You know, I saw gays for Gaza. You hear that? I've if seen the banner. Yeah. If you're gay and you're in Gaza, you're going to be shot right through the back of yeah. your head. It's what I've said is march that banner into Gaza. Right. And or see or how women, far you get. women for Gaza. Look at the state of yeah. women there. They're chattel. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, they talk about uh, from the river to the sea. Here's the river. The river, the, the river right. is right there, the Jordan River. Right. The sea is a few miles from here. That's Israel. When they say river, from the river to the sea, that's wipe out the state of Israel. Yeah. They're supporting genocide. Now, this is a sorry state of American higher education, including in schools where I went to. Uh, I went to one of them. You know, when the president of a university is asked, well, what, what would you say if somebody calls for the genocide of Jews? And context. they say it depends on the context. No, it doesn't. No, no it doesn't. Reason. But it, it tells you that there's a, a, a deep rot, as you say, and a bankruptcy there. And unfortunately, it's, it's translated to these people. But they're also, a lot of these people are also manipulated. They don't even understand that they're being organized systemically by groups that are not merely opposed to Israel. You look at what they're doing. They burnt, I saw this yesterday, amazing. They burnt American flags in one campus. In another campus, I think in North Carolina or South Carolina, I'm not sure which, they tore down the American flag, raised the Palestinian flag, while they're chanting death to Israel, death to America. And then something happened. American students took down the Palestinian flag, raised the American flag, and protected it. Right. And I was deeply moved by that. Yes, well, that, uh, that emphasizes, Dr. Phil, what I'm trying to say here. It's not merely our battle. It's your battle. It's the it, battle of democracies. It's the battle of civilization against barbarism. It, and it we're is, on the front line, and we're not going to give up. It is our... It's really interesting because the, tr the sad truth is that a lot of those students, they also are happy with death to America. They think that the whole Western world is guilty and irredeemable. Um, it's a absurd paradigm. It's a, like a far left paradigm that basically says anyone not in a position of power compared to the other is virtuous and the one that's powerful is not. So America is powerful, therefore it's not virtuous. Um, of course, if you were to look at Israel fairly, you would see how vulnerable Israel uh, seemingly is. Um, so that's the first point that actually a lot of these students are anti-American as well, the ones that are anti-Israel. But I think the key point that he touches on is that he's right. Hamas, to describe them as any kind of freedom-fighting liberation movement, they want all Jews dead. And then they'll go after the West and they'll go after, as he said, all those other minorities and groups. And basically anyone that doesn't... They're, they're, radical Islam calls for global Islamist domination. And those who don't uh, convert or agree or are like them will uh will suffer or will die 
And what this comes down to ultimately, and I think October, October 7th really brought this into, into view, is do you see the Israel conflict, the conflict with the so-called Palestinians, is this actually about a legitimate grievance? Or is this about a hateful, ideolo hateful ideology? That frames everything. If you think it's a legitimate grievance, well, then you say, yeah, it's liberation, it's resistance, it's all these things. Even though to try and say that rape and beheading and burning babies is in any way resistance is despicable. But that's the way in which they'll frame it. But the second you understand, exactly as Netanyahu was pointing out, that they want global domination, this, they really are that evil. They, just like the Nazis, they yeah, people just couldn't believe it. They thought, no, appease them, I'm sure they're rational. No, no, they're not rational. They want global domination. They're rational in their, in their worldview. They think that's what their God demands, and that's what they think they should be doing. But it's not really about some poor, pathetic underdog that wants to uh, just get their dignity back through self-determination and, and a, na a nation state. No, it's not about that. So once you understand that, the whole paradigm in, which, paradigm in which you view things turns on its head. The truth is that ever since Israel's founding, the shame in the Arab world, the dishonor for them, is that they lost a war against the Jews. The second, their second-class citizens, the Jews, who they'd oppressed and had been dimmies for so long, suddenly they win against them, they restore their nation state, which had been eradicated 2,000 years prior. What does that mean? Maybe God never forsook the Jews. Well, that can't be the case if we want to follow our radical Islamic paradigm. Therefore, it must be an evil state that we have to annihilate. Otherwise, our whole view of history doesn't make sense. Well, Israel's not going anywhere because the God of Israel never forsook the Jews. And so what's going to happen and what's going to need to happen is the Arab world and the Muslim world and those who are hateful are going to need to have their own paradigm shift. They're going to need to grow up and recognize the truth. The truth is slowly dawning on people. Even in parts of the Arab world, it's happening, certainly in the Christian world. And people say if Muslims and the Islamic world will never come round to Israel. Well, many parts of the Christian world who were so hostile to the Jewish people for centuries, the whole relationship has changed. So the same thing can happen. Esau and Jacob reconciled. So too can Ishmael and Isaac. I really believe that we'll see that. We will see that happening. But for now, let's just continue to spread the truth, share the truth, and not be shy in saying what really is the case, even when we face great opposition, even when people call you names and say that you're a genocide, or you're an ethnic cleanser, you're a supporter of apartheid, you stole the land, you're a colonialist. Be strong, be bold. Don't try and, eh, well, maybe you've got a point. Yet. Just be clear. If it, you think it's the truth and you know it, just be absolutely resolute. Be strong. Weakness is what they thrive on. The enemy thrives on that. Giving away Gaza was a show of weakness. And look what's happened. We have to be confident and strong. And we have to invoke that phrase that the Torah, that God says, perhaps more than almost any other phrase in the Torah, do not be afraid. Do not fear. Hi, thank you so much for watching. To watch another one, click here. To stay up to date with all our content, click here to subscribe. And if you're able to, you can help support JTV to grow and grow by clicking join below this video, where you can become a member and get perks, including early access to videos and private live discussions with me. But most of all, you'll be partnering with us on our mission to change the world.